for primer design. Fairly simple system. It's not fancy, but it will design primers for a gene or a sequence of interest that you want. And I'll show you how to do this. Let's go to the BVBRC workshop. There's that nice handy shortcut instead of having to search through all the public workspaces. And down here towards the bottom of my screen, there is a primer design folder. You can click on that. I've prepared a uh, primer design exercise PDF that you can, if you want to look at, I think you have to download the PDF. And then I think if you click on it, you'll be able to view it in a different tab. You can follow along in this workflow if you want. And those that online can do that, you can do that at your leisure. I'm going to try to go through it a little faster myself, however. So I'm going to go to tools and services. Under in the genomics column, towards the bottom, third from the bottom is primer design uh, web service. So we're clicking on that, bringing up the entry page for this. This is going to apply the primer three program, which underlies most people's primer design searches on different tools everywhere because primer three is a really well known, long lived, and really quite good program. So if you have a sequence, you have a gene and you want to design primers to amplify that gene either just as a marker or because you perhaps want to sequence a variable region across a whole bunch of isolates. It just designs a set of primers. You can enter a sequence that you have in FASTA format. You could just paste it into this box. If there's a FASTA header, it will pull that out and, I, and use that as the sequence identifier. If you don't have a FASTA header on it and you just have raw text, that's fine. You can optionally label your sequence, whatever you want to label it, that's optional. A different way of getting your sequence in here is by clicking the workspace FASTA radio button, and then you can select a FASTA file that you have in your workspace somewhere. So I prepared one for this, and to do this, we have to navigate here. We're going to public workspaces. I'm going back to that same primer design folder that we were just looking at. I've got this Brucella melatensis 16M rRNA FASTA. So it's got the ribosomal RNA sequence for one of the RNA replicons. It's for the 16S, not to be confused with the 16M, which is actually the genome identifier. So clicking on that, it recognizes that it's a FASTA file. It says that only the first sequence record will be used. So that's in case you've loaded up a sequence with a bunch of FASTA sequences in it. It will only look at the first one. So that's perfect. This next control is whether or not to pick an internal oligo. Some applications of PCR want an internal oligo for the quantification, for example, in real-time PCR, it can be useful. And you may want it or you may not, you can choose to click it or not. The next is the product size range. You may want a long product, or you may want just any product at all. It's going to be indicative that when you PCR it, that you've amplified something. The default is 50 to 500, which is a really easy to amplify. The shorter the, your product is, the easier the PCR is to run. And I've done this before with these default values. I'm going to try just something different. I'm just going to say, I want something that's 400 to 600, just to really try something out. And let's pretend we want a really long primer. There's the primer lengths. You can specify default and optimal minimum or maximum primer length. The defaults are just fine. And then down here, you can exclude a region from the sequence that you don't want the primers to be in. Suppose you know that that's a super variable region and it's not going to amplify in other species. So you can control which regions of your sequence, starting from base pair number one, and you specify it as the starting point, comma, and then the length of the region you want to exclude. Or you can specify in the next control the target region, which is you want the primers to be outside the target region. So the whole target region is in the product. And so you specify the target by the start and how long you want it to go. The next control is included region. So you want the primers to lie within this region. I'm going to use this control just to force it. We have a question. Go ahead. The question is, what are the limits on how long a PCR product you can request? And she entered 5,000, and it's saying that it's not valid. And I think that that's just because that's longer. 
than the sequence that we entered. Oh, you entered your own gene and you want the length of the, are you talking about the product size range here? I think you need to do it as a number dash another number to get it to be a range. And while she's doing that, I'm just gonna change my included regions to be one to 800, meaning I'm gonna target the, these primers to be in the first 800 base pairs of this gene, which is about 2,400 base pairs long. I just know that the first time I ran it for the demonstration, the results I got were clustered on the right and up at around over 2,000 base pairs. And I'm just gonna try to force it to generate primers on the left end, just to sort of show you that you can use these controls to control where the primers are designed. Then we need an output folder. And I'm gonna put it in this workshop and I'm gonna call this D, Melitensis, just abbreviating here, 16M, R, R, and A, primers, five prime. I'm gonna submit and it's queued my job. <clears throat> this job takes very little time. So I'm gonna go to the jobs list and it says it's running. What it means, it's actually sitting in the queue waiting to go because when it actually runs, it takes like two seconds to actually do this. While that's going, I'm just going to go to the pre-baked output, BVBRC workshop. I'm just going to show you. So this line is the previous job that I ran back in March. Clicking on the flag gets you into the output. And there are several files, which I guess I should mention. The primer three input. This is just a text file of the file that was submitted to the Primer 3 program and Primer 3 ran with that input. The next one is the Primer 3 output and it's what Primer 3 spat out. And they're not very user friendly. You can download them and view them if you want. I guess we could view them right here. See, this is not a super user friendly output. It does have the Primer sequences in it so you can actually use it. Here's a primer fast A file that has the primers, which are short, but they're in a fast A format. And you might find some use for this file if you wanted to say, map it onto some other genome to see where those primers are gonna bind onto a different genome. But the one file that you probably do wanna look at has an extension HTML, and it has the output in a more human digestible format. And what the Primer 3 program does is it'll give you multiple options. It doesn't just give you a single Primer pair. In this case, it defaults to five. There is a control for how many of these it will give you if you want to like see fewer, for example. And they're ranked. The top one has got the best scores. And there's the forward primer and the reverse primer, which, I mean, you have to know what PCR primers are. Presumably you do. Otherwise, you wouldn't really be too interested in this tool. It's got the internal oligo, and it tells you the start positions. You see, these are positioned far down towards the end of this 16S gene. So that's why during that exercise, I was trying to constrain it to be on the closer to the beginning. Okay, an internal oligo is, a, is an oligo that's going to bind into the product. So the primers get the PCR reaction going, and you amplify it up. And having generated all of those after having generated the PCR product, if you typically have a fluorescent label on your internal oligo and it binds into onto the product and that's a method of quantification in quantitative PCR and also TACMAN uses an internal oligo for that purpose. So some people need it. You can uncheck that box if you don't want to see that. There's some optimality criteria. The melting temperature of the primer and around 60 degrees is good. And these are very close to 60 degrees. The percent GC. Then these two are important for whether that primer looks like it's going to fold back on itself and extend the primer incorrectly, or whether the primer is going to combine with the other primer and give you a primer dimer. But the tendency for that self-folding for these is zero. The reverse primer has a little bit of complementarity. So those are criteria that you can use to understand whether the primers are predicted to work well or poorly, and these have good scores. Those statistics are different for the five different candidate primer pairs. All of them are pretty good in this particular case. 
I created this table and that is how I intend to convey the start and end, not of the of one primer or the other primer, but the whole product. So that's the start and end of the entire PCR product and the length of the PCR product. And then the complementarity and in the complementarity, instead of talking about a single primer, whether it can fold back on itself, which is not good, this instead talks about one primer pairing with the end of the other primer and extending the other primer, which is also not good. So that is complementarity between the primers, whereas the lines above that are self-complementarity of a primer to itself. Zero is a good number. To me, though, I don't really have a strong feeling for whether 14 is a terrible number. I don't think it is a terrible number, but... For example, this primer pair has got really great zero between primer complementarity. So that one looks like a really strong candidate. I don't know why it wasn't ranked first. We have two Zoom questions. Can we design a probe with the primer? That's the internal oligo, right? One interpretation of that is that's what the internal oligo is, the probe. But there's other meanings of probes that could be intended, and I'm not sure... If you just want something that's going to hybridize to the DNA, but not be used in amplification, for example, you could use this to design the primers and then use it not as a PCR primer not for PCR, but just for probing. It does tell you the melting temperature and biting positions. And if you wanted to do that in the job submission page, you might want a much longer probe. It might be for probes versus primers, you might want something longer. I don't know what the lab people would say, but... We have one. a question here of, can you design where the internal probe will hit? <laughs> no. You have some flexibility in specifying where the primers hit. The internal probe is just going to be in the product, and you don't have flexibility on that. I don't think primer three gives you flexibility on that. Let me just take you back to the primer design. While you're searching for that, I'll do this one from the chat if you want. They say, what if you have several serotypes variants and you want a primer type that can detect all the variants? Then second scenario where you have the variants but want the primer probe that are specific to each variant. Oh, man. Help That's... us, Obi-Wan. You're our only hope. That is a really great request, and it makes tons of sense, and I love that question. And give us a couple of months, and we might be able to actually get it to do that, but we don't do that right now. I'm sorry. This is just a very simple tool that just takes a single input and doesn't look for being conserved across multiple different sequences. I like the question. I want it to do that. And maybe we'll be able to get it to do that. I think that there might be tools online that you could use for that sort of thing. And if there aren't tools online for that exact purpose, that's a crime and we've got to rectify it. And you're not done. There are more questions here. Is it good to consider a GC of about 70%? Well, GC is going to raise annealing temperature and you want to, I would pay more attention to the annealing temperature than the GC myself. And you want the annealing temperature to not be too high or too low. Maybe. You want it to be like Goldilocks, I, just right. And, you know, the PCR reactions are tuned. To are 95. Kit, are, kit, are tuned for um, particular temperatures. Uh, lab people know, know this stuff much better than I, but they can play with uh, the temperatures in the PCR thermal cycler. Can you show us how to use the mark selected region buttons and what they do? I mean, clear is obvious, but I don't understand the greater than, less than the brackets and the parens or curly brace. Whatever okay. That is. To do that, I need to get a sequence. If I do this and do view and look at the features, get the features, get the features, click on a single feature. Go to the feature view on that single feature. And I think I can view the DNA sequence for this single feature. 
exact no i've got oh, it i got it. it me and my audience oh, we got this we got this down so i'm just doing this to grab some dna sequence and now go back to the primer design paste my sequence in here and if i were to highlight it then i go to click the button and suppose i was going to use the target region suppose the highlight in the text was the target region and i'm going down here to uh, confirm myself that it's the square brackets that i want so i'm clicking the square brackets it puts the square brackets i don't know if you can see it but the square brackets are placed at the end of my uh, highlighted zone oh yeah so they're in that text there right now and I'm going to accept all the other parameters and find a place to put this primer bracket target. Sorry, I've got code the wrong that. there, but you have to be using the text input. You highlight the region that you're interested in and click the mark, which is the exclude, the target, or the include, and you press go. One other thing that I didn't mention is there's a special control down here primer overlap positions that's a single position that will require that the primer overlap that one position so that's the most specific control we have here on forcing your primer to be right there and you could do it on both sides and right there if you really want to have specificity on where your primer goes it'll have to overlap that so that's a 20 base pair window that you can wiggle around